I'm still here. <laughs> Simple as that. I have full support of my investor. I have full support of my board. Maybe somebody just trying to start a rumor just to try and collapse us internally. That is 100% not true. Some people believe that Greg Norman will soon be fired and replaced. Surprising and breaking news out of Live Golf, where the chief operating officer has resigned after just the first season. Major exit from the breakaway golf league. Tiger Woods has called for Greg Norman to step down from Live Golf. I think Greg has to go. Rory McIlroy talking about CEO of Live Golf. I think he needs to just exit stage left. No one's going to talk and, unless there's an adult in the room. What do you say to that? They're going to try and throw as much as you possibly as they possibly can to try and undermine you whichever way they can. Um, Rory doesn't know anything, right? All due respects, Rory, he doesn't know anything about Liv. He knows something about the PGA Tour. He sits on the PAC Council. It doesn't have the power that you think because the board has the power, right? Rory doesn't know what he's talking about because he doesn't know the facts. I've always been a fan of Rory McIlroy's. My advice to him was just sit back, just take stock, watch what you say, because in the end, in the end, there will be a situation where, you know, he'll be asked a few questions that he may not want to be answering. Ultimately, Liv wants to become an eligible tour so that their players can earn official World Golf ranking points while they're playing Live events. I'll say this, I think we, we definitely deserve points last year. There's no rhyme or reason why we shouldn't, competing with some of the best players in the world. Based on its format, I kind of understand why they're going to struggle to get world ranking points. It's nice to have a ranking system, but I think the longer this goes on uh, with not having all tours involved, um, kind of the more irrelevant it becomes. What they're saying is no ranking points yet. For the world golf rankings to maintain their credibility, they'll continue to award the proper number of points that the tournaments deserve. It's possible not to also think about that other elephant in the room, the official World Golf Rankings. What are your feelings about that, the prospects this year? I know these, there's no, been no exact time frame given, which I imagine is a source of frustration for you. My frustration is for the players, right? I mean, the players deserve the points. They, they're playing up in their live events against a strength of field that is consistently strong, right? So if I feel for them the fact that uh, Dustin Johnson, I don't know where he's rated right now. Is it? 40th in the world or 47th in the world, I don't know, but for Dustin Johnson to be rated that high, it's a bit of a slap in the face, to be honest with you. Um, so from a player's perspective, I feel for them, we're fighting for it. Uh, we've applied uh, for OWGR points. It might put a bit of a spotlight on them about, the, about their board and their voting committee on who they are and what they represent and, and are they truly fair? Is it every bit as crucial to your guys' health as a TV deal in your mind, the world ranking points? Do you need them to be viable long term? Um, look, I think from what I'm hearing, I think there are a couple of other people coming up with another OWGR system. Why is, it, why is the OWGR the only system? Why is the tour the only tour? Uh, there's value in having other options to look at as well. And let me say this, that our players want to play other tournaments. Some of Point Blank said, no, I don't. I'm just happy with Liv. But I would say there's quite a few players that play with Liv, want to play elsewhere in the world. And for us, for them, to have this restriction placed on them and threatened of lifetime bans and all that stuff, it just, it's just craziness. Just because we are another platform that completely fits within the system, that is absolutely showing the, the competitive side of what golf can be, and be honest with you, when all this dust settles, the game of golf is going to be better off um, because you, you can't have both. And um, I'm looking forward to that day. You mentioned the future. You talked about different scenarios, two different tours, one tour, everything coming together. What does a peaceable future look like to you? Is, do you have a, a vision in your mind of how it looks? The answer to that is yes. I'm not going to disclose it. Um, the answer is yes, of course. I mean, you've got to sit down. There is an off-ramp somewhere. There is an off-ramp. We've got a, a, an investor. He's looking for an ROI. We've got to build out these franchise models. We've got to actually you know, create something that's never been created for. So we are going to continue down this path. We are not going anywhere. Um, we are going to be around for a long, long period of time uh, because of the investment and the ROI that we all see you know, when we model this thing out internally, what we see and even to date with the sponsorship value we see with you know, the, the, our principal players and their teams, it's, it's incredibly impressive.
And, and to be able to give that opportunity, we have to understand, you know, okay, we're going to work to this direction. Uh, we don't know where the, what the PGA Tour is going to come to us and say. Um, so we've just got to be flexible, but we also have to know what we want. Do you have a timeline for when that ROI hits? Or imagine you'd have it all written out in business plans. Yeah, we have it all in our business plan, yeah. Any, any yeah. projections you can give us about timelines? No, not really. I mean, but it, it's not as long as what you think, I can tell you that. The Masters Tournament has decided they will make no changes to their invitation criteria. The decision has been made and they are going to play. They are going to allow the live players that are currently eligible for the Masters to play in the Masters. One of the few real chips that the PGA Tour was going to be able to hold was if you go play on the live tour, you're not going to be able to compete for all the majors. People that aren't even fans of golf don't even care about it. They know they know what the Masters stands for. I mean, I think it's going to be more fun for us knowing that they hate us going to the majors and uh, beat them. Since they give us the notice that we're going to be able to play the majors, I was like, it's going to be so much fun. Just play four weeks, four weeks in the year against them and try to beat them. I think the media's kind of bloated up into a different situation than it really is. We all get along. We're all, we're all fine. Coming up, it's going to be the first Masters since Live has gotten established and the first full season for you guys and Live players meeting with tour players. Invariably, there are going to be stories yeah. uh, about the game within the game. I wanted to ask you about that. Brooks Kepka told me yesterday that's a totally media concocted story. It doesn't exist. There's no tension. At the same time, I think about guys like Freddie Couples, who, aside from maybe Brandel Chambly, has been one of the most publicly outspoken critics of, of Live. You're a player, you've seen what goes on behind closed doors. Can you give me an honest take? I mean, is it really, is Brooks correct to say there's nothing there? I or think there's nothing there with the majority of them. I really do believe that. The players share the first tee. They share the competition coming down 18. They, they share a locker room together, right? Their wives or their girlfriends are friends. So of course they're gonna be, um, the guy's gonna be the guys, right? But there are gonna be a few who have probably been asked to be vitriolic against the live guys for whatever reason. But again, those guys who are, who are sit out there vocally being negative to us um, don't understand. They've never sat down to understand what live's all about. So until you completely understand what you're talking about, don't open your mouth because you only embarrass yourself, right? And then there's a great saying, the voice of the critic is far louder than the voice of the advocate. So, you know, people are going to tend to believe the critic more than anything else. So, Brooks is not 100% right, but I bet he's close to 95, 97% right, because there's always going to be one or two that's going to be, you know, doing things that they're probably being asked to do, like I said. They're being asked to do it. They're not, it's not really their deal. They're being kind of prompted to be critics. Look, that, that's, that's my read on it, to be honest with you. Um, because again, if you understand what it is, and you understand the opportunity that there's that is out there because maybe you're a generation apart from it and maybe there's something else to it i don't know but until you know exactly what you're talking about don't say anything because the truth is always going to come out given the criticisms that have been lobbed at lib about it not being as serious the guys aren't going to lose their edge etc and so forth do you see this as any kind of important litmus test for live a proving ground look when these guys get to the first tee of any tournament, look what happened at the British Open last year with DJ, right? It was DJ was up there. Was, you know, was it really Liv versus everybody else? No, it was DJ against playing for the Claret Jug. And I think that's where it'll all play out and wash out over time because at the end of the day, that's what it is. It's the competition side of life again, competition on the golf course. Uh, and giving the guys their rightful opportunity to, to, to play for that green jacket. Would I love to see one of the boys win it? <clears throat> of course I would, you know, for them, not for Liv, for them. Liv Golf has been facing scrutiny for its ties to Saudi Arabia. To be honest, the one thing that I that has really annoyed me over the last few months is how disruptive they're all trying to be. Once you make your bed, you lie in it, and they've made their bed, so you know that's that's their decision, and they have to live with that. I honestly feel like it's a slap in the face to, to the rest of the members of this tour. You know, there are definitely, you know, people that are and have been outspoken about it. You know, the media can definitely make more of it and have made a lot more of it. What's been the hardest part for you of the past year? Uh, the vitriol, the hatred. It's just despicable to me um, to, to see that 
because I'm still a lifetime member of the PGA Tour. Um, and to see the path that was decided to be taken um, with the, the hatred and the vitriol and trying to destroy not any individuals, attacking individuals, um, is really, really disappointing to me. And it tells you tells me a lot, quite honestly. Uh, one day when it all is over and done with, I'll sit down with you and you ask me that very question and I'll answer you, the, the, I'll give you the answer that's in my head today. Which is more, more, more specific examples? or yeah, what? more specific examples. Because it's really sad. It's very, very sad. Not one person around the world, is, when I travel anywhere, has said to me, this is the stupidest idea I've ever heard. Not one person. And I would tell you in all honesty, if somebody did, nobody has come to me and said, this is the dumbest idea I've ever done. Competition, the game of golf, for the players, for all our stakeholders, because it's just opening up a new opportunity for the game of golf through the franchise model, right? Why hasn't it been thought of before? Do you get the sense that there might be ever a sense where there's almost too much golf? I mean, is there an appetite among fans for all of this golf now? Well, it's, look, it's different style of golf. It's up to the viewers, right? They can turn on and see, okay, I love live for what it is. And they can go over and watch the PGA Tour. I love the PGA Tour for what it is. You have a choice, product versus product. If anybody wants to enter a, a new world, right, you sit down and understand what is on the table and understand, okay, this, this entity over here has got this and we are this. Can we somehow coexist? Can we uh, merge together? How does it play out? To not sit down right from the outset and understand what the live uh, platform is and how it can and, and will sit within the ecosystem of the game of golf baffles me. If they sat down and understood and they said then, okay, no, it doesn't work. We don't want anything to do with it. Fine, we understand what it is. What do we need to do to adjust? How do we make the changes to, to work within the ecosystem for everybody to be happy? So that's where the divisiveness started. Um, we didn't start the rhetoric, the negative rhetoric. Uh, we wanted to do what's best for the game of golf, best for the independent contractors. I felt this way since 1993, right? Um, and I personally have uh, been on this belief that the players have a, a more of a right as independent contractors to increase their, um, their net worth to some degree. So look, here we are. We're in a place, um, our beta season, I thought on a scale of one to 10 was a 9.5. Um, the players coming out, coming into 2023 are more excited than what we were at the start of 2022. Why? Because we unpack our franchise model. We unpack those teams. We unpack this whole new story that has never been done in the game of golf before. And finally, the other thing that people overlook is it's the first time golfers had true equity invested into the game to grow the game of golf, to extract value and unlock new, uh, the value that's been sitting there that nobody's really paid attention to. So I'm, I'm proud of it. I really am proud of it. I'm so happy for the boys. I'm so happy for our 48 players. I'm so happy for our, our sponsors and everybody else involved with it right now because people are starting to see the true value of what Liv is delivering. And um, you know, 2023 is going to be the, the start of it all.